RSM SY7D four channels cross hole sonic logging tester teaching video. One, device description. CSL host, depth counter and connecting cable, pipe orifice pulleys, tripod, plane probe and connecting cable, power adapter, toolkit. Two, applications. The device is suitable for the integrity test of concrete cast-in-place piles to determine the position, scope, and degree of pile defects. Applicable standards. Standard test method for integrity testing of concrete deep foundation by ultrasonic cross-hole testing. Ultrasonic transmission method refers to transmitting and receiving acoustic waves between the pre-buried acoustic tubes in the pile body through the transducer. Acoustic detectors are used to detect the acoustic parameters of sound waves passing through the cross-section of the pile at a certain interval along the longitudinal axis of the pile. Afterwards, these test data is processed, analyzed, and judged to determine the location, extent, and extent of the defects in the concrete pile body, thereby inferring the continuity, integrity, and uniformity of the concrete pile body and assessing the integrity level of the pile body. 3. Operation Preparation 1. Before testing, it is necessary to collect the information and data of the tested project and the test plan shall be prepared according to the purpose and the foundation pile information shall be recorded. 2. Before the test, the delay time of the instrument system should be determined by the rate method according to the specification. We can also simply measure the delay time of the instrument system by crossing the acoustic transducers for acquisition. Connect the two transducers to the host, CH1, CH2. Click Ultrasonic Foundation Pile Testing, Settings, Advanced Parameter Settings in turn. Set the parameters such as the pipe outside diameter, pipe inside diameter, and probe outside diameter to the same value. And set the system adjust time to zero microseconds. Click Save in turn to enter the sampling interface. Cross the two transducers attached to the instrument. Click Sample. After the waveform is stable, read the first arrival time as the system zero calibration time of the channel and record it. 3. The four acoustic tubes are numbered clockwise from a specific orientation. For example, the four acoustic tubes can be numbered as A, B, C, and D, respectively. The specific direction can point to the north, or it can be a small mileage to a large mileage direction. 4. Use a Vernet caliper to measure the outer and inner diameters of the acoustic pipe and the outer diameter of the transducer accurate to the millimeter. Every two acoustic pipes form a test profile. Measure the net distance between the outer walls of the acoustic pipes as the profile span, and measure and record one by one with an accuracy of millimeters. 5. Fill the embedded acoustic pipes with water and check whether they are unblocked. 4. On-site operation. 1. Install the depth counter. A stable position should be chosen to erect the tripod to the greatest extent. The bayonet of the depth counter should be installed at a leveled position as much as possible. Install the depth counter and align the two vertical spools in the direction of the pile. 2. Lower transducer. Put the four transducers into the tubes respectively. Make sure that each transducer reaches the bottom of the tube and keep the cable in a straight state and record the value on the transducer cable scale as the drop length. Measure the exposed length of the acoustic pipe with an accuracy of millimeters. Confirm whether the drop length of the four transducers are the same. If not, find the reason and adjust it. Place the transducer cables in sequence into the trunking of the depth counter. Tighten the transducer cables one by one. 3. Connect to the host. According to the number of the acoustic pipe, connect the transducers in each acoustic pipe to the corresponding channel of the host in turn. Connect four transducers to the interfaces with CH1, CH2, CH3, and CH4 respectively, and connect the depth counter connecting cable to the interface with H on the host. 
Connect the other end of the depth counter connecting cable to the corresponding interface of the depth counter. 4. Start the host. Click Ultrasonic Crosshole Test. The main interface is divided into three areas, namely Wave Display Area, Waterfall Wave Display Area, and Operation Command Area. 5. Information Input. Click the Setting button and then enter the project name, Save Path. After Save Path setting, the instrument will generate a folder named after the corresponding character. If the project name is not modified, the files of each pile are saved in this folder by default. Set up the on-site parameters in sequence such as pile number, pipe number, pipe length, testing depth, and pile D. Notably, if there are no special circumstances, it is recommended to set the pile length and the testing depth to be consistent. Set the node spacing, depth record format, angle and specification information according to standard and site conditions. Input the spans and sequence into the Profile Info section. 6. Host Parameter Settings Click Advanced Parameter Settings, Device Parameter according to the accuracy requirements of the testing pile. Generally set the sample interval to 1 microsecond, the sample length to 512, the pulse width to 3, and the transmit mode to be low voltage. When the span exceeds 3 meters, high pressure can also be selected. According to the size of the pulley used, select the corresponding pulley parameters. Generally, the default is the big pulley. If any errors are found during the test, you can click here to improve the accuracy calibration to correct the pulley parameters. Enter the system adjust time of the corresponding profile one by one. The outside and inside diameters of the acoustic pipe measured on site, the probe outside diameter, the pipe WS and the water WS, the instrument will automatically correct the acoustic pipe, coupled water and zero sound. Save and exit. 7. Gain and Delay Adjustment Click Sample and adjust the gain and delay according to the size of the collected waveform and the position of the first wave. During the testing process, it can also be adjusted by clicking plus and minus in Auto. The principle of gain adjustment is to make the waveform display amplitude fill the display area as much as possible without causing clipping. The principle of delay adjustment is to make the starting position of the signal within the range of one-third to one-half of the abscissa until the ideal effect is achieved. You can also choose automatic adjustment in the adjustment interface. The instrument will automatically search for the first wave and set the appropriate gain and delay. If the ideal waveform signal cannot be obtained after multiple adjustments, after eliminating the faults of the instrument and sensor, the transducer should be lifted up to the point without defects and then observe whether the signal can be adjusted ideally. 8. Start Test Click New, enter the file name, and lift the transducer cable at a constant speed until the transducer reaches the nozzle. The current sampling depth is displayed in real time as the transducer is raised. Note that the lifting speed should be controlled within 0.5 meters per second in order to prevent the interface of the waveform caused by the frictional collision of the sensor and the acoustic pipe. The boost speed symbol is green for normal and red for too fast speed and the possibility of missing points. 9. Click Save to complete the test. 5. On-site data analysis. Click File. Choose to open the current test file. Click Analysis and observe the depth WS curve, red curve, and depth AMP curve, blue curve, profile by profile. Observe whether there are acoustic anomalous measuring points in each test profile. If it is found that the acoustic parameters are abnormal, the abnormality of the pile should be further confirmed in time, such as encrypted remeasurement and oblique measurement. After on-site sampling and save or analysis, the data could be exported to a U-Disk. 6. Precautions 1. The concrete strength of the tested pile should not be lower than 70% of the design strength and shall not be lower than 15 MPa and the age shall meet the requirements of the standard. 
2. The acoustic tube should be closed at the lower end, capped at the upper end, and free of foreign matter in the tube. The acoustic tube should be filled with clean water, and the transducer should be able to rise and fall smoothly in the acoustic tube. 3. The data needs to be recorded clearly during the testing, and the field information must be input in strict accordance with the recorded values and checked on a section-by-section -section basis. 4. Since the instrument can test multiple profiles at one time, when inputting the span, be sure to pay attention to the corresponding relationship between the instrument channel and the acoustic tube. 5. Testing instruments must be within the valid calibration period. When using testing instruments and supporting equipment, they should be operated in strict accordance with the requirements of the regulations or instruction manuals. Transducers, sensors, and other equipment should be handled with care. 6. In order to protect the connecting wires of transducer well, please put an orifice pulley on each acoustic tube orifice, respectively. 7. When testing, make sure that the four transducers are bottomed out and on the same level, and that the depth information matches the length of the pile. 8. Avoid tangling of the transducer cable during lifting.